what is an eclipse? Well, essentially an eclipse is when the moon photobombs the sun. Essentially, the moon gets in the way of the sun for a little bit, and we get a solar eclipse. And uh, so today we're going to be talking about your guide to the 2017 solar eclipse. Um, now, unfortunately, here in Florida, we are not going to get total uh, the total solar eclipse. We're not going to get what's called totality, where essentially the moon completely covers the sun. But we are going to get up to 85% here in central Florida. Now, to give you an idea of what that is, I have actually pictures that will show you kind of an idea of what it looks like, and it's still pretty amazing. So for those that are like, oh, I can't make it to the center line where the totality happens, don't, don't do, don't do, you know, still go out and still look at the sun. It is incredible. So no matter where you are, uh, if you're still here in Central Florida, definitely take, a, take advantage of looking at it. So what is a solar eclipse? What, is, what happens exactly? What is the science behind it? So here we have the sun. Of course, the sun is huge. It's basically a big, giant, dense, hot ball of gas. And it's producing thermonuclear energy, hydrogen fusion in its core. It's releasing energy in the form of light. That light heads towards the, into the solar system hits off the Earth, hits off the Moon, and at this time, the orbit of the Sun, Earth, and Moon are in pretty much perfect alignment in their orbit, orbital plane. It means that they're aligned in such a way that they match perfectly together. Now, when this happens, the Moon in the sky is in the exact same position as the Sun in the sky, and that's how we get a total solar eclipse. Now, during this time, as the Moon uh, uh, blocks the light of the Sun, you get a what? A shadow. We call this the umbra. It's a shadow. Basically, it's a, a circle, a shadow that's projected on the Earth. And so, as the Moon is slowly orbiting around the, um, the, uh, the or as the, or excuse me, as the Earth is rotating, it this this projection is seen on the Earth's surface. And so, that's what causes an eclipse. So, an eclipse is, it happens when the Moon blocks, or the, the light of the Moon blocks the Sun. The um, the shadow is casted on the Earth as the Earth is rotating we see a shadow casted on the Earth. Now, seeing the, since the moon is very small compared to the Earth and the sun, it produces a fairly small shadow. That's why the eclipse path is actually fairly narrow. If you've ever seen those pictures, you see there's this kind of line that is drawn across the United States that shows the center line where the actual total eclipse occurs. That's because the moon's shadow is fairly small. Let's talk about how to view the eclipse. Well, first things first, one thing you do not want to do is you don't want to look at the sun with your eyes. Otherwise, you'll go blind, like this person right here. You do not want to look at the sun with just your eyes. That will be disastrous. So, what do you do? Well, you have to shield your eyes from the light from the sun. Now, there's specific types of uh, glasses and uh, eyewear and, and telescope instrumentation filters that will allow us to safely look at the light from the sun. Not only do we have to worry about the sun's visible light, but we also have to worry about the sun's UV light and infrared light. And a lot of the uh, glasses that are being sold online may block a lot of the visible light, but what happens is, is that a lot of these knockoff glasses that are actually not good still let in the UV and infrared light, which actually can still damage your eye. So what we need to do is when we look in getting stuff to actually physically look at the sun safely, we have to look for a few things, and I'll explain what you want to look for. Eclipse glasses, um, first things first, um, what you'll see, actually, do you mind if I borrow those for a second? I, I, that way I don't have to dig through mine. All right, so the first thing you're going to notice is that these are special type of filters that eventually fil basically filter out 99% of the light from the sun, only letting in just a smidgen of light to allow us to safely look at it. So what you're gonna see when you put these on is you're gonna see essentially a yellow circle where the sun would be. Now usually when I give these to little kids and they put them on, they just go crazy. And I'm hoping all of you do the same. It's really, I mean, how often do you get to say you look at the sun with your eyes, right? Exactly. Now what you'll notice throughout the eclipse, especially even here in Florida, is you're gonna see slivers of the sun slowly disappear. It's gonna look more and more like a crescent. Now, the thing you want to notice, though, and people say, how do you know the difference between a knockoff pair of glasses versus a approved pair? Well, first things first, they have to be certified. There's a company called ISO, the International Standards Organization, basically. You'll see a, uh, on one of the sides of the glasses, you'll see literally an ISO on there. If you see that, you are okay, all right? There's also another symbol that says, certified by British standards. It's a CE. So if you have the CE and the ISO on there, you're good to go. 
So what are you going to see during the eclipse? Well, with your new heavy-duty eclipse viewers, whether it's be glasses or, or whatever, you're going to see this, basically. So it's going to start off, look, like I said, remember, when you, when you look at the sun with your glasses or whatever tool you're using, you're going to see essentially an orange or yellow disk. You're going to notice that on the bottom right side, you're going to see that there's a little bit of a, of a like almost like a bite taken out of it. And over time, the bite will get bigger and bigger and bigger until it looks like Pac-Man, essentially. And uh, what you'll see is that over time, it gets more and more and more until you get to about here. Now, this is about similar to what Florida is going to experience. Remember, as I said, that even here in central Florida, it's going to be pretty impressive. Now, people ask me all the time, what about darkness? Will we experience it? Well, if you got to really know. you got to really know. For the, most average, for the most average person who's not paying attention, you're not going to experience much of a difference. But if you are in the know like you are now, if you will look at your shadow during the eclipse, you'll notice that your shadow will get dimmer during 85%. And so it's not going to appear darker, but you're noticing that the shadow is going to become more diffuse. Where is the best place to go from here in Florida? Clearly, anywhere between... Uh, I, I, basically, this is 10-hour drive. This is a 10-hour and below drive. All right, so no more than 10 hours, it will take you to drive. So you can do it in a day. So basically, from uh, the Nantahala National Forest, just west of uh, Asheville, down into Charles, north of Charleston, that's where you want to go. Now, South Carolina is ideal for one reason. The center line, which is what this red line is, that's the greatest amount of totality you experience. If you're in this area, you will see totality, but as far, the further you get away from this red line, the shorter totality is. It's only by like 15 seconds or so. So it's not like going to be that, and you know, not that bad. And they're actually treating this event as a natural disaster. They are. They're literally treating this as a natural disaster because it's incredible. Last time this happened in the United States, we didn't have cell phones. In fact, actually, uh, there's a good chance that you might not have good cell phone this day. The, 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 band, the, the, the cell towers aren't going to be able to handle the amount of social media going on. So, so I, that's why I'm, another reason why I'm going out to East Oregon where there's no cell phone coverage because whatever, I'm not going to be able to use it anyways. Also, another thing that I recommend is bring a gas canister with you. If you are driving, get yourself, go to Walmart or get yourself like a five-gallon jug and fill it up because I guarantee that most gas stations, like a hurricane, are going to be out of gas the day of. So if you're trying to get back home, there's a good chance that you're not going to be able to find much gas. As I said, this is what the sun will look like here in central Florida. Not too shabby. So again, if you can't go to totality, stick around and use those eclipse glasses. If it's clear out, go out and look at the sun.